You get on the train, you get off at Richmond. You might well be mistaken for thinking, where have I come to? This looks like any normal high street anywhere in the UK, let alone in London and somewhere near the Thames, apparently. Well, stick with us, because not only we're going to show you this little bit of the high street, but don't worry, we're going to show you the bits behind the high street that you really need to visit, and also down by the Thames. Although I do have to say, this little florist here in his octagon looks fantastic. So a little stroll down the high street, keep going, and then on your right hand side is Brewer's Lane. And this is where the back streets of Richmond start taking place. And it's like anywhere, isn't it really? You go and find the back streets and that's where the real part of the place is. And this is what I would call real Richmond. Now down these alleyways, you've got independent shops selling, as you can see, all sorts of things, jewelry on the left, and then on the right, a nice vase just hanging there. Brilliant, so all independent shops around here. But stick with us, because not only are we gonna show you the little places and the little nooks and crannies to come visit in the town of Richmond, but we're also going down by the River Thames as well. Richmond itself was founded by King Henry VII's building in the 16th century of Richmond Palace, so named in 1501, from which the town derives its name. The palace itself commemorates King Henry's Earldom of Richmond in North Yorkshire, the original Richmond. The town and the palace became particularly associated with Queen Elizabeth I, who spent her last days there. Now, do you remember we're in the high street? Yes, we walk down that alleyway and then look what you find. You've got Richmond Green, which is this vast expanse out the back here. And you can see there's a square or cordon off, which basically means you come down here during the summer, that will be a cricket pitch. So you can sit in the benches and watch the cricket going by. And also the houses around Richmond Green are absolutely beautiful. No, I haven't looked at the price, but I know many people out there will do to see what the average price of a house around the green. Yes, that's the name of the road around it. Yeah, look at that white one. Wow. Many of the houses around here are Georgian terraces and they actually survive and they're well preserved and been designated listing buildings on account of their architectural and historical significance. The whole area that we're in today was originally known as Sheen in the medieval period, and it was first recorded as so in the 10th century. And it survives in the neighboring districts of East Sheen, also known as Sheen, and also North Sheen. Now the manor entered the royal hands and the manor house eventually became known as Sheen Palace before it was largely destroyed by a fire in 1497. Happens a lot in London, doesn't it? And that's when Henry VII rebuilt it in 1501 and then called it Richmond Palace does make you wonder, doesn't it, with all these fires that happen in and around London and then names changing, if someone had an ulterior motive. No, no, can't have done. Right, okay, let's continue with the history as we look down the side streets round by Richmond Green. Now, I've mentioned some of the royal connections already, but believe it or not, Henry I lived here briefly in the King's House in Sheens in 1299, and also Edward I as well took his whole court to the manor house at Sheen. In 1314, Edward II, after his defeat by the Scots in one of the battles up there, founded a monastery in Sheen, and the boy king, Edward III, came to the throne in 1327, and he gave the manor to his mother, Isabella. They spent some £2,000 on renovations, and it was later on in his life that he died at the manor. Richard II was the first English king to make Sheen his main residence, which he did in 1383. So we've got a couple of Henrys, we've got a couple of Edwards, and we've also got a Richard in there as well. And um, Henry VIII loved the area so much that the Great Park at Richmond uh, was one of his favorite places. Now we're gonna be featuring that in a future video, all filmed and in the can and ready to go at some point in the future. And believe you me, it's worth waiting for. It's beautiful up there, just like these side streets. And once again, with galleries and little cafes and that down here, this is the heart of Richmond. You really need to make sure you come to. And if you're looking for a street on the map, it's called Paved Court, and you can see why. You can imagine how bustling this area is in the beautiful summer months, so definitely worth getting down here if you're coming into the Richmond area. If you're enjoying the video, please give us a thumbs up, will you? Because that will help spread this video out to more people on YouTube so that they can love London as well. And if you're watching our channel for the first time or first couple of times and you haven't subscribed yet, go on, hit that button, subscribe, and also get notifications. 
As you come out of Paved Court, you come across another street, but what took my look is, yes, a bookshop. I must admit, I do love going to old bookshops and having a good flick through. Right, this is the old town hall. It no longer is, and inside you've got restaurants, cafes, and various other bits and pieces, and at the far end here, you've also got the library here in Richmond, so a nice quiet place as well. Now, what I love coming down here is you've got these cobbled streets, and the reason for these cobbled streets and this courtyard, this leads down to the banks of the River Thames. And this has got to be one of my favourite ways to approach the Thames here at Richmond, because just as you get closer and closer, the whole Thames opens out in front of you. Absolutely beautiful. If you're coming down here and you fancy a lovely walk down the Thames, then if you carry on underneath the bridge, which we'll show you in a minute, which is Richmond Bridge, you can follow the towpath right out. And as you go along, there's all sorts of different cafes, restaurants, and some great vantage points to look up and down the River Thames. So really, this could be a fantastic day out. And if it's in the summer, you could even bring your own picnic and stop wherever you fancy. This bridge was built in the late 1700s, and before that, there were ferries that used to go across, and therefore to replace the ferries, originally tolls were charged until 1859. Now this bank here on the Thames on a busy day is absolutely packed because you are literally a stone's throw away from the Richmond town itself. So therefore it's worth coming down here on a quiet day, but when it's not, you need to come for a little walk down the towpath, which is what we're gonna do in a second. But we're gonna do that once we've taken in the wildlife. Yes, herons abound. So if you fancy taking a boat trip on the Thames out in the outer parts of the Thames, that's well outside London, then this is the ideal place to come here at Richmond. And of course, it's all on the underground line as well. So there you go. So before anyone says Richmond's not in London, it is, it's on the underground and that's why we're counting it. There you go. I know someone's gonna be upset. Now this part of the Thames all the way down to sort of Putney Bridge is very, very famous for its rowing. And here we go, underneath the arches here, you've got different rowing clubs. So if you fancy coming just to have a look at those, they've got those open and quite often you can just put your head in and see what's going on. There you go, you've got an old rowing boat right here in this tunnel as you walk underneath Richmond Bridge. If you're loving some of the scenes that we're showing you here, then you need to pop to our website, londonvisited.co.uk, go on the photos bit, and you've got a chance, if you would like to support the channel, to buy some photos from this video, all in 4K, and they're only under three pounds. So if you fancy supporting the channel, it's the place to go to. Thames, where way we're looking here is going to take you to Kingston upon Thames, and we've covered that bridge previously. And I've put the link to that video up in the top right hand corner because there's another beautiful bridge that goes across. And then, as we turn and look down the other way, this side of the Thames, this will take you into London. You've got Kew Gardens coming up, Fulham, Putney, uh, you've got all those sorts of places before you then real, really meet the middle of London. The river is still tidal at Richmond, so to allow major passenger and goods traffic to continue to operate during low tide, there's a half-tide lock, which was opened in 1894 and is used when the adjacent weir is in position. Now the weir ensures that there is always a minimum depth of water of five feet, eight inches toward the middle of the river between Richmond and Teddington. So Teddington's not that far, and it's at that point, Teddington, where the river becomes no longer tidal. What I love so much about walking down the banks of the River Thames, especially around this area, is that you can walk out onto the pontoons like I have. Um, no one will stop you, although you're not really allowed to go out there, and just get amazing views and really feel out of it in the middle of the Thames. It's amazing. So what did you think upon Richmond upon Thames? What did you think of the little alleyways that we showed you, the green and also down by the River Thames? Do you like it? Have you seen it before? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. 
If you love the Thames, then you're going to love some of the bridges at Thames at night. And we've covered the Albert Bridge and Chelsea Bridge, and the video to that is in the top right corner.